anything in vehicles we do at a and j here so i've been with the company for about nine years so i might have seen quite a few of you at the walks we do the water walks too so uh, you might have seen me by the van <laughs> before over there as well so um but without further ado i just want to show you some different uh solutions first on video and then i got a little powerpoint presentation to run through and then obviously open it up to any questions you have so uh so what, what I have here, I have a Chrysler Pacifica, uh, which is one of our mobility vans. Uh, so all you have to do is you just press a button here. It's a side entry van. Press that two times. And that's going to bring the, the ramp back up there. So there's two different types of minivans when, when you look at accessible vehicles. Or SUVs, you can call it too, because there's a Chevy Traverse now. So there's side entry and a rear entry. Side entry, it's a little bit more common uh, just because you're able to get into the front passenger area. So I'm gonna run it back down here and then I'll move my uh, computer along so you can see the entry of it. See the ramp coming down. All right, so we're gonna get a point of view perspective here. All right, so as you can see when I turn this, I'm just gonna make sure my camera is in line here. All right. So you can see the front seat is removed in the passenger side. You're able to do that either on the driver's side or the passenger side and have the wheelchair right up front. So you don't have to worry about uh, riding in back. You can be right alongside uh, the, the person you're riding with. You can also ride in the middle, but, uh, but it gives you the options of both. So um, there is buttons throughout the vehicle for the door and the ramp. There's a button over here, button over here, and then a, uh, some buttons up front as well on the dashboard, yeah. So pretty much anywhere in the vehicle are able to operate the door and ramp, so. Now there is different securement systems uh, to lock into. Now, if you're dealing with a power chair or manual wheelchair, that's what's allowed to be transported. You can't do a scooter. That's not actually tested for a mobility vehicle, but either of those uh, generally you can take a, what we call a locking system and I'll, Bring that up in the PowerPoint a little bit more. Uh, but what that does, all you have to do is ride the wheelchair right into the position. It's similar to a fifth wheel, automatically locks in and you're able to uh, secure the wheelchair without having to use tie downs, which is great. Cause that's a, the other option is a four tie downs. Generally, you know, on the wheelchairs, they'll have like the four hook spots for the power chair. Otherwise you connect to a manual, uh, the manual brackets that are solid on the, on the manual chair. So, um, but uh, so that in a, in a nutshell is a, is a mi minivan. The options for that is a Chevy Traverse uh, SUV. Sorry about that. Chrysler Pacifica Dodge Grand Caravan, and Toyota Sienna and Honda Odyssey. So those are your accessible vehicle options on the outside. But I also wanted to show you, uh, we also have uh, different seating modifications, uh, seats that turn out and uh, wheelchair lifts as well. So I'm just gonna walk out there and show you that as well here. So I'll be right, let's go walk out to our shop here. Greg, I have a question. Yeah. Um, I've only- After this though, I just wanna show you this in the shop real quick here. So let me just, uh, Bob here. So I'm going to just spin this around here. So you see this chair actually spins outside of the vehicle. And this can be done on a minivan, SUV, or anything along those lines. I would flip it around, but my camera, for some reason, won't work on the rear, so. 
you see it just comes all the way down to the ground and then you just sit in the seat so just with the, with the click of a button here like so so now you can see it's at floor height let's move it all the way down there so that, that's an option to go along with this so you also have what's called a joey lift Just gonna put this on the ground real quick. You just press this button here. Lift comes out. And then you're able to drive the chair right onto it. It can support up to 350 pounds. It's in the wheelchair. And then you say eventually it comes down to the ground here. Nice thing about that is you don't have, uh, other than a couple of securement straps, uh, sometimes you don't even need it because there's this bracket up top here that protects from the chair going into the passenger area. So it works pretty slick that way. What about head clearance? Uh, so this is just for the wheelchair. It's not, not for somebody staying in it. Makes sense. So it just depends. Usually you have to fold the wheelchair down to get it in through the through the hatch, depending on what vehicle it is. Uh, but yeah, this is more for uh, if, if you can walk with a walker. And usually you have these two applications together and a a lift to go with it as well. So so just wanted to show you all that so you guys know. <laughs> Greg, that you could use a power wheelchair or a manual chair with that lift. Uh, yeah, you could. Obviously, more commonly a power chair because sometimes yeah. the manual chair, it's not as heavy, so you can just get, get it in otherwise. Uh, but it would work for either. Just no human being on the chair. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. So say if you like yeah, somebody had a scooter or something, they just wanted to load in uh, for the time being, that's what it's for, so. But uh, I'm gonna go back to the other room here. All right. I'm just gonna use my chair again, so I have a little better surface to hang on here. So let's set up here. So I'm just gonna demonstrate. I have a manual chair here. Benefit to a rear entry, you don't have a it's more of a manual type application. So there's not as much that can go wrong with it. And if you have a manual chair situation, you just drive it in straight in, straight out, but it's more of a manual application. So you just got to pull up the ramp, pushes in, locks into place. You see, it's still very simple. And I'm just going to spin it around so you can see inside here. All right, you can see that okay? So it's got a, a channel where the floor is lowered in the middle here. Uh, but as you can see, you can't get into the driver area with this one. So it's more meant for always riding in the back. Oops. There we go. I was talking before about the locking system. And let's see if I can... You can see that uh, this is what, what it looks like. We put a bracket and pin on the bottom of the chair and it automatically locks into this system. So then you don't have to use a tie down, which looks like this. Uh, you don't have any, any of that. So <laughs> um, 
over here, we do have driving controls too. Uh, so you can, you can actually remove the entire chair of the vehicle and drive with hand controls as well. Uh, so can you see that okay? Point the camera down just a little bit. There yeah, you is, go. Is that better? Yeah. Yep. Okay, so, so you can just... Uh, hey, Greg, you muted yourself. Okay, is that better? <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> okay, so uh, there's a bunch of different types of hand controls. This is push right angle. Or that, that was push rock, I'm sorry. Push right angle, push pull, and then push twist. So that's like a motorcycle grip, so. But there's a, a bunch of different hand controls even beyond what we see here today. So this is just kind of basic stuff, so. Um, but I think I'll go through the PowerPoint. Does anyone have any questions on a, what I went through so far? So we can go to the next one. Okay, so just to give a little background of A&J real quick, uh, we've been around since 1975 and we're in actually five different locations here in the state. We're in uh, the Green Bay area, Balders, which is Manitowoc area. That's where it all started. Uh, Richfield, which is the Milwaukee area, Eau Claire and Madison. Um, but, uh, as I said before, we will come over to the client's home and stuff. So I already kind of went through that part of it actually. So, uh, we're good there. <laughs> um, just a little background. We're a dealer for Braun Ability. Braun Ability is a company that actually started this, these type of vehicles. Uh, primarily we deal with more folding ramps than anything because Braun is built in, uh, Indiana. Uh, what a folding ramp is, it folds together like we saw in the vid video here. Uh, there's also what we call an in-floor ramp too. I just didn't have one in the showroom here, which slides underneath the floor. Um, reason they have a little bit more folding ramps because they the folding ramps hold up a little bit better with the salt and snow because the in-floors, uh, they do take it underneath the, underneath the track and they have a little bit more service problems if they're not serviced properly. So. Uh, uh, so, so we deal with a lot more of them, but uh, Ralph Braun, actually, I just put a little picture on here, kind of a cool fact. Uh, he made the first accessible van. He actually had muscular dystrophy and he was diagnosed at the age of nine. And he came up with that solution for himself. And that's how uh, the whole industry started. So he's the Steve Jobs in, in essence. <laughs> so. Um, old milk truck. What was that? I'm sorry. It looked like an old milk truck. No delivery. Yeah, it's an old postal Jeep is what he did with it. And he retrofitted it with the oh. wheelchair left and hand controls. So it's pretty cool. Um, but, but these are just some of the options. I just want to make the PowerPoint. So that way, if, if you guys wanted to share it, what, what options are out there? Uh, as you can see, all the minivans and there, we also do the Ford Transit, which is a full size van. Uh, you can't. <coughs> That's more of a lift application where you have to drive on a lift platform and it picks you up. Uh, so it's more like the old school way of doing it, but uh, definitely more modern of a vehicle too. So, so we're good here. And uh, I, I did kind of get into this on that when I brought the seating out, but uh, there's also, so the, obviously I, I showed you the seat and the Joey lift. Uh, there's also, commonly a crane style lift that's done more in SUVs. So it's just a crane that picks up a scooter or a power chair and brings it into the vehicle. So generally they can carry between 350 and 400 pounds. So we're good there. And then these are just kind of a close up snapshot of what, what I was trying to show you on my, my screen. Uh, so different, we can do hand controls. Uh, that's the, like the locking system, the QLK 150 there that uh, locks the chair in and then the retractable restraint. So that, that hooks to the four corners of the chair, like I was saying. So, um, but there's multitude other options to give you an idea with hand controls. I was talking about before, uh, we have a system, you can do a joystick, which you can just do the brake and gas and steering and everything all within that joystick. I just didn't have a demo to show of it, but, uh, there's a lot of cool things we can do here, which is awesome. <laughs> All right, so I, just a little little recap of what 
Uh, the difference is like a side entry versus rear entry. Uh, the nice thing about side entry vehicles is the ability to drive uh, the mobility device up into the front row. And they are primarily automatic and fast. Uh, so, so I always give the example of say you're at Walmart uh, and, and you're coming out of there and it's pouring rain. Uh, you're able to press that button and the ramps down there for you uh, when you get out to the parking lot to get in. So you don't have to be uh, soaking wet or anything like that. So, um, and then uh, obviously with a side entry, they, they, with, if you can find the yellow stripes and somebody's not mean and parks next to it, uh, you're able to, you have to allow about eight feet of space, they say, to the side to uh, for the ramp to come out. But obviously with a rear entry, you're unloading in traffic. So the side entry, you don't have to deal with that as much. Um, obviously you can park by a curb and unload on the curb. There's actually a button on the side entries that have, because uh, the whole vehicle actually squats down and back. It's got a mechanical kneeling actuator that drops the vehicle down. So that's with that and the, also the floor being lowered from the front of the dash to the back seat allows that very low ramp angle. So you don't have a super climb to get up. You think about a, some of the ramps in a house, how long they have to be to get that certain rise. Uh, that's what allows it to do. But with that button that actually squats the whole vehicle down, you can turn that off when you park by a curb because obviously when you have a curb, it's elevated. You don't need that extra squat down. So th there's that too. Um, also with the side entries, you can get the highest of chairs in there as well. Uh, they go up to 61 inches inside. The rear entries go up to 58 inches. Um, and then maximum seating, uh, you, you have a full back seat, a bench seat, which is a, uh, which can fit three people in there uh, pretty comfortably. So um, then we'll move on to the next one. All right. And then the nice thing about a rear entry. So just to give you an idea for a side entry, the max width, whenever we look at wheelchairs and stuff, we look at two different measurements. We look at the width and then the, the, the measurement from the ground to the top of the head in, in the mobility device. So, uh, with a rear entry, they can do actually up to a 38 inch wide wheelchair with their widest ramp that's out there. So usually that's what a lot of times it caters if, if we are dealing with a wider chair, a rear entry works better for it because uh, the side entries to give you an idea is that the biggest chair you can get in there is 32 and a quarter, I would say. I, I'm not gonna say the actual measurement because it, it's not recommended to go right to the edge, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, um, as I said before, though, uh, manual function, nothing can go wrong with it. Um, and and you, you're going straight in and straight out. You don't have to make a full turn into there. So, because obviously, even in a side entry, you always have to be facing forward. You can't be facing sideways. <laughs> um, uh, and, and that actually opposed to a side entry where, where you're unloading in traffic. The only thing nice about that is you can't get parked in. Uh, but you might want to bring some yellow cones behind you. So. Uh, we're good here. All right, so so just a little brief uh, thing on financing and funding. Uh, the VA, uh, if, if there is a connection to ALS for 100% connection, uh, they do have grants out there. There's two different grants called a 1394 and a uh, 4502 that can be utilized. Um, and then there are many lenders that we deal with, uh, usually about f four or five. Uh, that have that do offer financing. The thing is with financing in our industry, a lot of banks they don't understand the the value of the conversions in this because they're they're looking at twenty thirty thousand dollars. They're like, what is this? You know, we're only looking at the van. So ours actually understand uh, with a decent down payment that, that they're able to finance the whole vehicle. If, obviously, depending on credit and all that stuff. So so we're good here. And uh, I, I wanted to keep it relatively brief. So we had some good time for questions here. And uh, 